power in the event that it went out. Uh, that's why we placed an emergency order for 26 2 megawatt generators. Uh, the status of those generators is as follows. 18 generators have arrived and are in the process of being set up and connected, which we expect to be complete on Monday. Uh, eight final generators are en route from Miami and will be delivered on Sunday. It could take some time to get them connected and operational. We will keep you updated on that. Until these generators are set up and we have additional turbines come back in line, there will continue to be some risk to our drainage capacity. Uh, so at this time, the system's capacity to drain storm water from the streets of New Orleans is diminished, as I have said, for the east bank of New Orleans, west of the Industrial Canal. This power issue does not affect uh, New Orleans East, Lower Ninth Ward, or Algiers. Again, this means we believe we have what we need in the event of a typical rainfall, but we will not have what we need in the event of a deluge or a major rain event. On the second issue, as it relates to pumps, we currently have 103 of 120 pumps available to be operational. Uh, the 17 that are out of service and are being assessed for emergency repairs are being assessed as we speak. Crews are beginning to work 24 seven on these emergency repairs. We will post the status of the individual pumps and a schedule for the repairs at the Surge of Water Board website. We also uh, posted logs for the pump stations from July 22nd, August 5th, and August 8th. We're still learning new information and investigating the capacity of individual pumps and pump stations. Again, out of the abundance of caution and because of a likelihood of rain throughout the weekend, I'm asking the people to remain vigilant. According to the National Weather Service, we're expected to have a 60% chance of rain today. As with any sum summer thunderstorm, there could be isolated areas with heavier rain, maybe up to two inches. During heavy rainfall, emerging residents in the affected areas to move their vehicles to higher ground, take necessary actions to protect personal property and stay off the roadways unless an emergency makes it absolutely necessary to do so. Again, this is for the areas of the East Bank, uh, west of the Industrial Canal. Pumping stations in Algiers, New Orleans East, and the Lower Ninth Ward are operating off of a separate power source and have additional backups and therefore would not be implicated by an outage. At this time, drinking water and sewage services for all of the cities are not, cities not, are not affected. The generators we're securing will also give additional redundancy to these systems. In the event of heavy rain or flooding, we're reminding residents to call 911 to report street flooding and life-threatening emergencies. Residents are advised to remain indoors during a heavy rainfall. Uh, NOPD has staged barricades in 20 areas prone to flooding, including under the underpasses. Again, as a precaution at this time, we've staged high water vehicles and other response vehicles to be used in the event that we have any flooding. We also have sandbags available at Perdido and South Lopez. We expect to have additional locations announced later today. For those seeking more information or that are interested in registering for the special needs registry, please call 311. 311 is open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day right now, including weekends. Our emergency operations center will remain open and staffed. The city will keep residents updated through email alerts and, and the at Nola Ready Twitter account. Uh, we will keep you updated as we learn more information. Uh, and with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, so Matt McBride is saying that they, his read of the, uh, the logs from the pumps show that some of them weren't turned on until eight. There were a, a lot of other issues. I wanna know if you guys have looked through the logs, whether you agree with his assessment at this point. I, I, I have not looked at the logs personally. I think that the after action report is gonna demonstrate what the facts are. The logs will say what they say. Um, and I'm sure that after action report is gonna reveal uh, things that we did not know or things that were not accurate uh, at the time. That wouldn't surprise me at all. But part of the after action report is to be able to look into that and verify them. Um, and can you, can you clarify a little bit what the status, so the, the turbine is up, running, and working um, so we're back where we were Saturday, but you are not confident that that's enough to... Um, well, I say, I say that because we, we, we have a system that can, given the, the, the tenacity of and the intensity of the rainfall, can get overwhelmed even in the worst of circumstances. You saw that last week, five to nine inches in a short period of time is going to hurt us in a, in, a, in a serious way all the time. Uh, that's number one. Number two, as you know, for the past seven years, we have been working mightily and have spent a huge amount of money uh, rebuilding the power sources and other things at the storage and water board plant. Uh, 
I'm not an engineer. I don't have as much as understanding of it as, as, as maybe you do. Uh, but we have five turbines that produce uh, energy and power for the pumps uh, and for the drainage system and for the sewer and water system. The turbine that went out was turbine number one. That, to my knowledge, was a six megawatt, 25 cycle uh, piece of equipment that provided a certain amount of power to the entire system. That is back up, and yes, we have as much power as we had before. Whether it, you can't say, though, that you have as much power to handle any event at any time. As you know, we also have two other turbines that went out during the summer. Those are under emergency repair. They're supposed to be back online late August, early September. Uh, and so the engineers are gonna have to tell us you know, how much they need for certain events. It is interrelated, by the way, as we go forward, and I'm gonna try to say this in buckets um, that, that I can understand. One of the issues is, is power. One of the issues is pumps relating to this particular problem. There are other broader issues, catch basins, long-term power, et cetera, et cetera. And as we all start to get better educated with specificity about all of these specific things that have been asked about, I want to try to answer questions with clarity so that there's no lack of confusion. So I'll have the folks that have expertise in this area to talk to you about that. This is a six uh, megawatt unit. It is back online. Uh, it has been brought up, I think, to three megawatts because that is as much as the load would allow it to do. The engineers think that it would handle uh, six if required to do so. And so I think the total amount that's available, don't hold me to this, let me check, is 31.5 megawatts. And that will handle whatever it can handle. You can do the assessments with the other folks to see what that capacity is. Robert, any new information on what caused the fires that are caused determined yet? And with the third party group doing the after action report, kind of touch on how long that will take to complete and how much funding it's costing well, I to don't, do so. I, I don't know what the source or why the fire occurred. It was enough to shut the turbine down and then now completely repair that and the turbine is back up and working at the capacity that it had before the thing occurred. So I don't, I don't know what the nature of the fire was or the cause. Secondly, we are putting together right now an interim emergency group of engineers that can bring a third party eye to uh, what happened, that's a backward look, um, and then what we're concentrating on right now, and uh, that will take run its course with new information coming available about who did what, where, when, and how, as after action reports should. What our team is focused on right now is securing the system as best and as fast as we possibly can. And we're working through who, what, where, when, and how and those contracts, the scope of them, et cetera. I've spoken to the Inspector General yesterday afternoon and asked him to review any contracts before we signed them. He agreed that he would do that. Uh, but my focus right now is getting the right people in place that can give us unvarnished good information about our current capacity as it relates to power, our current capacity relating to pumps, what it is that we need in the future, and how fast we can get there. Of course, all of it comes with the cost. It's way too early to find to figure out what that's going to be. I can tell the citizens this without any fear of it. Equivocation. We have a, a big system, and it's very expensive, and there's a lot of need. And on the third party after action analysis, we'll actually be putting out a bid, a short bid, to get a firm to do that. Okay. For yeah. I, I do want to make a couple of things clear here because some things have been going around. I do not intend uh, to privatize the sewage and water board, first of all. Uh, and secondly, I don't intend to sign any long-term contracts that would bind the next mayor or the next administration. This is a long-term fix. We've actually been working on it for seven years. It is a gargantuan task. We're obviously not anywhere where we need to be. And the next mayor and the next city council are going to have to be thinking about with this current city council and this current mayor about how we get from here to there. Okay? Anybody Thank else? you so much. Thank you. Jeff, you good? If, if we could talk to some... Yeah. Yeah.